guys, Professor Doni here, and we're continuing with our problems here on physics, and we're dealing with static equilibrium right now. Static equilibrium, if you remember from class, means that I have to add up all the forces, they equal to zero, and add up all the torques equal to zero. Summing up the forces means there's no translation, and summing up the torques means there's no spin. So if those two conditions are met, um, or applied to our problem, then we know it's not moving left, right, up, or down, and it's not spinning left or right, counterclockwise or clockwise. So here's a quick problem. We have a beam that's hanging here by a pink cable. There's a hundred mass hanging one meter in, and then there's this little combo of tens hanging from another beam at eight meters. Length of the beam is nine, <coughs> excuse me, and mass of the beam is 50. We want to find out where that X has to be to balance it. Now we could do this couple, two ways. We could do it through summing torques or we could do it by looking at the center of mass. Since we're trying to find out where to put this to balance it, I prefer to actually do the center of mass idea because if we find out where this hundred, the beam, and the two masses here balance or where the center of mass is, that's where we have to put this cable to balance. So we're going to find the center of mass. So what I'm going to do here is just start out let me get a little better color, and uh, I'm not sure that's a better color. But what we're going to do here is just draw our free body diagram real quick. Okay, there's our beam, and what do we have here? We have a 100 hanging here. In the middle of the beam, we're going to have a 50. You know, I'm actually going to change this to a 10 meter beam, so I don't have to deal with the four and a half meters of the center. So correct that. And we also out here at eight meters we have 20. Now where's the 20 come from? 20 is a combination of the two tens that hang below. This beam does not know that there is two tens hanging. It just knows, hey, something's pulling on me and it has a mass of 20. Okay? So to convert those over to forces, we'll have to do mg of all of those. And if we go quickly in here and put our dimensions in, uh, there's going to be a one meter, this has to go into the center, so that's a 5 meter, and this one at the end is an 8. So that's at 8 meters per our drawing. So really we're trying to find the center of mass of this. Now the X center of mass is when we add up all the masses times their diff distance from the same point, and we divide that by the total mass. Now this same point here is going to be the left side. I just like to start on the far left side everything is positive that way. So, going from left to right, we're going to have the 100 acting a distance of 1 meter plus the 50 of the beam acting at 5 because it's in the middle of this 10 meter beam plus the 20 acting at 8. Again, the beam doesn't know it's split up into two tens. It just knows it's a 20. That's over the, all of them. 50, 20. Whether they are times zero here or not, if they show up on top, they have to be in the bottom. So what does that give us? That gives us 100 plus 250 plus 160 and uh, 170 on the bottom. So that gives us, uh, what is that, 3, 4, 10, 510 on the top. If it's not, I'm sure somebody will tell me. 170 on the bottom. 510 divided by 170 is uh, three, 3. Wow, that's nice. It tells us at 3 meters we put the rope, the cable here, this thing will balance out. Now we could check torques about that point. Now that we know it, we could set that as an equal sign. Everybody on this side of 3 is this way. Everybody on this side is that way on that side of 3. We confirm it, but we did well with just by using center of mass. So. This actually came out to be a fairly easy one using center of mass. Hope that helps, and we'll see you next time.